So last time we talked about New York Rangers 20... what was it? 2019? No, it was 2018. Yeah, 2018 top 10 pick, Vitaly Kravtsov, ninth overall. We'd made a video talking about how his entire situation was really weird with the Rangers. And how with all the information coming out about how this guy wanted to be in the NHL, how he didn't feel like he was going to get a chance at the NHL level because of the personnel on the Rangers forward core already, he is a right wing by the way, despite the fact that Pavel Buchnevich, who was in a similar position, was traded away in the offseason, but nevertheless ended up in Kraftsov getting sent to the AHL because the Rangers wanted to keep Libor Hajek instead, Kraftsov refused to report, and then it publicly came out that he wanted a trade. We had information and rumors saying that he would actually be okay with playing in the AHL, just not with the Rangers. And there were so many hypothetical questions arising saying, okay, is this a problem with the player? Is Kraftsov just the biggest, most entitled baby of a hockey player out there because he wants to play top six, and when he's not given that opportunity or when he thinks it's not going to happen, when he gets sent down to the AHL, he's like, nah, man, sorry, and he takes his ball and he goes home until he gets traded? Or is this a problem with the Rangers and how they develop their talent? Because 2017 top 10 pick, Leish Anderson, suffered a very similar story, and he eventually got traded for a significantly lower amount of value than what a 7th overall pick would normally be. So, for Vitaly Kravtsov, we had all these rumors going about that he was back in home, he was doing his thing over there in Russia, and he was just kind of waiting for a trade. However, the Rangers did not actually trade him yet. What we have is an update here from the KHL, because it turns out if you're a fan of Traktor Chelyabinsk in the Continental Hockey League, you guys are getting Vitaly Kravtsov back on your squad. He played 49 games with the Traktor Chelyabinsk team last season, getting 16 goals and 24 total points. He was under a point per game in the postseason too, and now he is back in that system after posting up four points in 20 games played with the Rangers last year. You gotta remember, he actually wasn't given an opportunity to play with the Rangers in the regular season this year, which kind of leads to the frustration that he has, where he sees himself as a top six potential option, despite the fact that the top six on the Rangers consists of Panarin, Lafreniere, Zibanejad, Kako, Kreider, and Strom. Yeah, I forgot that one. That's my bad. But either way, this is the latest update that he is indeed now going back over to the KHL. And it's kind of strange because when you think about players getting loaned out to other hockey leagues, you're almost never alone for a short amount of time. Unless it's a very specific circumstance, like, for example, last year. We had ourselves the pandemic shutdown year. The NHL did not actually start until the beginning of 2021. So the 2020 portion of the 2020-2021 season was completely down. That's why a lot of players were actually able to get loaned off to Europe and play somewhat of a shorter amount of time there, just waiting for the NHL to get back up and running. Under normal circumstances, which, believe me, were far from normal here in the world that we live in today, but in terms of the hockey side of things, all the hockey leagues are going on, we're as normal as we have ever been in the past year and a half here, so for most hockey scenarios, it's difficult to find yourself a situation where a player only gets loaned out to Europe for a short amount of time. Even if you go back to the previous example, let's talk about Leish Anderson here. Before he got traded over to the LA Kings, he was indeed in the Rangers system. He refused to report to the Hartford Wolfpack, and then he made his way over to HV71 on loan. He spent the last parts of the 2019-20 season there, and the early parts of the 2020-2021 season over there, and then he got traded. You take a look at Jesse Pugliarvi on the Edmonton Oilers, because he was kind of in that same boat with Leish Anderson in the same time frame. Pugliarvi spent an entire season with the car pot, and then some afterwards. This was all in contention with the Oilers because he wanted more opportunities and the Bakersfield Condors just wasn't doing it for him. He wasn't really playing his best hockey. Nevertheless, though, they stuck through with Pugliarvi. Ken Holland refused to trade him, and now he is back in this system doing extraordinarily well. He is over a point per game. For Vitaly Kravtsov, he did spend the beginning part of this 2020-2021 season with Traktor Chelyabinsk, and then he came over to the Rangers to finish off the year, but now he will most likely go out there and play 
what is going to be a good chunk of this season with this KHL team. It would be difficult to envision him coming back to the NHL right away because he's gonna only want to play NHL minutes. He already refused to report to the AHL in the first place, and he said he actually would be okay with the AHL as long as it's not the New York Rangers farm system, which is very specific and very, you know, it's kind of petty in a way, but either way, what makes the situation so strange is the newest quote from Kravtsov that was published out here on The Athletic. I'll leave a link in the description to the post right here. However, this is indeed an Athletic article, therefore it is paywalled. This is the quote over here on Reddit. I want to thank the Rangers for working with me, and I appreciate the open and honest conversations we have had during this process. While this has been a challenging time for me personally, I believe having the opportunity to return to Tractor and work on my game is the best thing for me right now. My main focus is getting better every day to continue working towards my goal of playing hockey for the New York Rangers. Interesting. Interesting, 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 interesting. So he throws a fit. He gets sent down. He does not want to get sent down. So he's like, no, screw that. I'm not getting sent down. I'm staying right here. And what? He goes back over to Russia, he gets officially loaned out to the KHL, and now he gives a statement saying, yeah, you know, I hope I'm able to improve my game, work on my stuff, and do the thing that I need to do, which is, you know, score goals and play hockey, because I want to play for the New York Rangers. Ooh, boy, that's really strange, isn't it? Especially considering the somewhat predetermined outcome we had earlier on in the year. What is that predetermined outcome that I was talking about? Well, it's the idea that because the Rangers already have Lafreniere, Zabanajad, Kako, Kreider, Strom, and Panarin on their top six, that Kravtsov would not get that opportunity, leading to him feeling displeased with the way he's being used? If he was so adamant on that, to the point that he doesn't want to report to their AHL team that he wants a trade, this quote just kind of throws everything out the window, doesn't it? I get it, it's probably just for fan service. It's saying to the media, yeah, you know, we're on good terms, we don't have any beef. Maybe just preserve the amount of trade value that he has, because if he says to the media, yeah, I want out, I hate this team, I don't like the Rangers, etc., then all of a sudden it's a lot more difficult for the Rangers to actually trade him because other teams can just say, well, your guy wants out. We're not going to give you your asking price of a first-round pick or a top-six prospect or whatever, because your guy doesn't want to be with you. We'll give you a top nine guy instead. Here's a late first. Here's a second round pick. Because you have no bargaining power here, New York. It's a lot easier for NHL teams to stick it to the Rangers if it becomes publicly known and established by Crafts of himself that he is unhappy with the way this team is treating him. So maybe for his sake, for the sake of actually getting a move done quicker, and for the Rangers' sake in terms of actually not getting ripped off in a trade, Maybe that's why Kravtsov went out there and was like, yeah, you know, I want to play for the Rangers, you know, I think it's a good decision for them to loan me out here, despite the fact that I already refused to go to their AHL team. Which you could see as a potential step up from the KHL in general. But to be honest, if you are a Rangers fan looking to see what's going to happen with Kravtsov next in the next part of his KHL tenure. I mean, he's already had, like, what, two stints? Two separate stints in the KHL. He went over there as a youngin, then he was drafted, he played in Hartford, he went back, and then he went to the Rangers again. This is now his third stint in Russia. He's probably gonna go out there, and he's probably gonna be a pretty good goal scorer on that team. Like, he was already a good one last year, and the Tractor Chelyabinsk Hockey Club, I mean, they have not really too many recognizable names. Timu Polkanen comes to mind, so does Vitaly Abramov. They do have some players, but if Kravtsov comes out here and he joins up with this squad and ends up getting, I don't know, a point per game or something, I personally wouldn't be surprised, but... You should never take KHL numbers as cold hard facts when translating them to NHL potential. So all that's left to do now is wait and see what happens with Kravtsov. Does he actually go out there, do extraordinarily well? Does he get traded sooner rather than later? Let me know in the comments what do you think. How have the Rangers handled this situation too? Do you like the way they've done this? Do you think what they've been doing is appropriate for the prospect and the caliber of the prospect they have? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video. I and I. And bye.